Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, folks. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. Tell you what, we're going to go back and look at some scripture here that we've examined already because I think this is really, really, really important for us to comprehend and to understand. And we're looking at Ephesians 4 and we're examining uh, what the Lord says to us about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer about spiritual gifts. And uh, in the midst of that, though, we're encountering all sorts of things, and particularly in Ephesians. Because Ephesians really shows us how we are to live as believers individually. And, and then also, <coughs> excuse me, guys, how we are to live as a group, as the body of Christ. And I believe if we would simply do what the Lord tells us to do, then so many things that are the problems within the organizational church, okay, within the body of Christ, so many of those would just fall by the wayside if we would simply function together in the way that the Lord designed. Now, what we've seen at this point in time, and I'm going to begin with Ephesians in the fourth chapter, is that uh, Paul is calling us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling of which we've been called. And he tells us to walk in humility, to walk in gentleness, to walk in patience, and walk in tolerance for one another. And again, I don't think that we can consider this often enough. If we are called to walk in humility and gentleness and patience and tolerance or forbearance, I think the King James says, if we are called to walk in that way in humility, gentleness, patience, tolerance toward one another, that means that there will be times that that will be required. In other words, there will be times of stress. There will be times when we have to set things aside. So he tells us to do that, and he tells us to be diligent in preserving the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Again, by definition, the true body of Christ, those who are truly saved, the true organism, is unified in the Spirit, of the Spirit, and by the Spirit. Okay? We don't have to seek to be unified we are unified by definition. We are told to be diligent to preserve that unity, not to do anything to break it. And then we saw that there is one body and one spirit. In other words, one church, one spirit. There's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one God and Father of all, over all, through all, and in all. So we've seen all this. And we saw how when the Lord ascended on high that he gave gifts to men, and that's what we've been looking at in 1 Corinthians 12 and in Romans 12, is these gifts that the Lord has given through the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 11, we've seen that he gave gifted individuals. And this is where I think that we really, really lack within the body of Christ, because we do not teach, we do not lead people in understanding that they are gifted by the power of the Most High God that he's released the Holy Spirit, and he's given some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. Now, as I said before, we will pick two or three of these things and say, oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yes, 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 we have pastors. Yes, we have teachers. Uh, yes, there's probably even a need for evangelists. But out of most of our backgrounds, we reject the apostle and we reject the prophet. And you can't do that. You can't pick and choose. You can't come along as many within the body of Christ do and say, oh, well, that was for another time, but we really don't need that now. And they will give very, very articulate defenses of that position. It's simply not true. The reason we need folks functioning as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, shepherds, and teachers is told in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service. Generally speaking, I was rereading this passage again right before we got together here, and I, I was just struck about how we do basically the opposite. We don't equip the saints for the work of the service. Okay, We really don't. We try to get the saints to do things for the work of man's kingdom for the work of the organizational church, but we don't equip them for the work of the service of the kingdom. We don't impart the word to them. We don't lay hands upon them. We don't pray for them. We don't do it for the work of the service. We do it for the work of man. The next part of the phrase is to the building up of the body of Christ. 
<clears throat> the things that we do, we do to the building up of the organizational church. Just give heed to how often you will hear certain phrases. Now, I'm not saying this is that these things are said in any type of malicious way. Okay, I'm not saying that at all. But so often we'll hear, well, our church, my church, okay, that type of thing. And that just builds into the kingdom of man. We are to be building up the body of Christ. And the way you build up the body of Christ is for the saints to be equipped for the work of the service. The ones who equip the saints are the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. If we don't do it that way, we are not doing the true work of the kingdom of God. I can't say it any plainer than that. So these are supposed to equip the saints for the work of the service to build up the body of Christ, not the body of man, but it doesn't end there, verse 13. Until, well, we, we have a timeline here. Until when? Until we all attain to the unity of the faith. To the unity of the faith. But what we hear all the time is attaining to the unity of oneness within an organizational body. Just think about that. Just look at the things that are done day in and day out, uh, wherever it is that you worship. And see how many things are done for the unity of the organizational body itself, not for the unity of the faith. And so we are to be doing these things. We are to be equipping the saints, building up the body, until we all attain to the unity of the faith. It continues. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of the Son of God. When you look at a lot of church structure and a lot of things that you see, you will see that there's uh, great attention given to the attaining of the knowledge of man, a denominational knowledge, for instance, what we believe about something. Uh, you will see tremendously creative uh, uh, pa patterns and practices and procedures to understand the knowledge of that particular church organization. And so here's what you do to attain to first base. This is what you do to attain to third base, home, all this type of stuff. There are things that you do to attain membership. There are things that you do to attain and walk the way that God wants you to walk. I understand what they're saying. But uh, quite often, it's not even a strong, I mean, a weak undercurrent. It's a strong current that is all about man and it's all about what we are doing. And they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's for God. It's for the kingdom of God. We're doing this where people's lives will be transformed. Really? I think if you look at it, you find out that there's other agendas involved. And then Paul sort of triples down on it. He says, hey, we're supposed to do this until we're the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, until you are a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Okay. Until you've reached a point of being a mature man, until you've reached the fullness of Christ. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, you can't do that because we're sinners. We're sinners saved by grace, and we can't be holy. We can't be that way. I think you've been lied to, folks. I think you've been lied to from the pulpit. I think you've been lied to uh, from Sunday school lessons and classes. If we cannot walk in holiness, then why has the Lord told us repeatedly in the New Testament, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, yes, I will grant you, you cannot walk in holiness in the flesh. You cannot walk in holiness in the soulish realm. But we can be holy as he is holy. We can be holy in the spirit and we can allow the spirit to rule and reign in our lives and not sin. Now, I'm not talking about a perfectionism where we can sit there and say, well, I will I never sin anymore. The second you say that, you just stumble over pride, right? <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about what's being revealed right here to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Yet the fullness of Christ is being released in each and every believer. Folks, if we were to do this, if we were to take this to heart, if we were to read the scripture and say, Lord, reveal this truth to me, let me live this out. It would transform us as the body of Christ. Uh, well, my time's up. Again, I'm Dale. I thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.